Hello Virgo, welcome back to my channel. So this week we're going to, um, we're going to try out this here deck. The Mystical Shaman Oracle. And we're going to pull a few cards from that. So if you enjoy my readings, please be sure to like and subscribe. As well as ring the bell so that um, you get notifications whenever I post videos weekly. Alright, so at the end of this we're going to talk about some new, um, some narcissistic traits that I have recently learned about that I found pretty interesting if you'd like to stay. All right, so for the first card, this is under what's crossing you. We've got the smoky mirror. All right, and in your recent past, we've got the sacrifice. For your current and present situation, we've got the holy mountain. And for your future, we've got the rainmaker. All right, so let's take a quick look. I'm going to pull... Um, a couple cards to go with it. Let's read these first and see which ones we're going to pull. Alright, so for the first one, it's called the Smoky Mirror. And this is what it looks like. Smoky Mirror. All right, so the smoky mirror represents aspects of what is implied yet cannot be immediately known in the world. The mystery of how things come together and how they fall apart without obvious casualty. This symbol also represents the shadow of the human psyche and the parts of the self that one disowns. The smoky mirror can also represent a state of denial or the inability to refuse or refusal to see the truth. All right, so you, you or you're somebody you know might be having a hard time coping with reality, coping with their situation, all right? And this is what's currently crossing you. Okay, Virgo? So let's take a look and see what the next card is. This is in your recent past. Wait, hold on. We got one more little section here. So, um, let me see. When the symbol of the smoky mirror appears, you're invited to see beyond your own self. Acknowledge that past limits of your current ability to, perce to perceive there is a vast interconnected world where events are orchestrated in divine order, but challenging to fully grasp. Now is the time to trust that no matter what the current conditions of your world reflect in the hidden realms, all aspects of the human journey are celebrated. The beauty and the darkness, the misery and the courage, no matter where you are on your journey, know that some things are meant to be a mystery, which you are meant to understand only through experience. Take heart, for the smoky mirror will ultimately show you beauty and wonder once the fog lifts the distortion you see now. Okay. So I feel like this is definitely true for me um, and, and most everybody probably. We have Mercury retrograde, which also makes this um, like kind of a shadowy, like just a really, really rough depression type of time where you might be crying or, you know, not really fully aware of why you're feeling so blah. Your vibes are off because the planet Mercury has a lot of strong vibrations and it's it's going direct tomorrow though so everything's going to be spiffy tomorrow all right so let's take out the look in the past we've got the sacrifice and 
and I will like to pull a little charm. We'll do charms for transitions. How's that? All right, we have the guitar pick. All right, so if you have someone in your life that might, you know, play an instrument or a musical type of person, maybe that's the one who's crossing you. All right, let's take a look. The sacrifice. <coughs> Excuse me, I did a nasal rinse earlier, and uh, let's just say I should have waited to put my makeup on because I had to put my makeup on again. All right, so here we go. The sacrifice means to make sacred. The sacrifice is an offering of gratitude made from the heart, a feast of love pre prepared for the spirit. In the olden days, sacrifices sometimes involved rituals, which made which blood was offered to the gods. For example, in the Bible, Yahweh preferred Abel's sacrifice of one of his lambs to Cain's offering of vegetables and fruits. The Middle America, however, Quetzalcoatl, the Lord of the Dawn, came to teach that spirit preferred our songs and our prayers. To the blood of humans or animals and it also says in the invitation the sacrifice asks you to offer your spirit that which is most precious to you your offering will be sanctified by return and returned tenfold you will be elevated to the altar at which you have been praying and meet the divine at the table with the heavenly feast you are a welcome guest in this banquet your heart is the only worthy offering that you can bring life has been generous with you in so many ways all right so a lot of you are probably um possibly thinking you know that there's there's no reason for sacrifice if you're christian you might be feeling like that's um no longer necessary but um for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction whether or not we choose to believe so i do believe that for sure and i feel like um that everything you put out in the world will come back to you tenfold and if that's bad vibrations then that's the kind of um sacrifice that you're willing to make you, that's what you're going to get back all right, so let's take a look. The next card here, we've got the Holy Mountain, and this one was reversed. All right, and this one's number 25. Okay, so the essence. Native people and around the earth Okay, I just want to make sure I got the right one here. Holy mountains, the holy mountains. Native peoples around the earth recognize mountains as places of great power, where one encounters spirit or where the gods or goddesses reside. The ancient Greece mountain Olympus was the home of 12 main gods and goddesses. In Tibet, the pilgrims cir circum circumambulate <laughs> Mount Kailash 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 to bring prosperity in Peru pilgrims climb the ice capped mountains of Aus of Austin Gate to receive starlight and bring fire to the earth all right and I'm Born in the mountains so of course I have to agree here that the mountains are you know absolutely godly all right so this one's upside down so we're gonna read what's called the medicine all right let me show you so if you get an upright card for this particular deck you get this and then if it's upside down you get this so you always read the essence of the card and then if it's upside down you get the medicine so 
When the holy mountain shows up, it is time to be active. Do not let your doubts deter you and keep you bound. This is a time to leap over challenges and to remember that from the top of the mountain, there are no obstacles. Only beauty and unobstructed view of the entire earth. And there's no need to go shopping for the right hiking boots or camping equipment to climb the holy mountains. You already have the gear that you need. Overcome any lethargy, indolence, and laziness as you are the real obstacle. Okay? So you are holding yourself back. Don't let that be the case, okay? And I do, um, I definitely know what they mean about the packing of the stuff. It's a whole lot harder to hike up 10 miles of mountain with a big backpack on your back. Okay. But we did it many, many times. <laughs> it probably would have been easier just to take a hacksaw, right? Okay. All right. The Rainmaker. Number 42, in case that number means anything to you. All right, the essence of the rainmaker. The rainmaker is the master of manifestation who can call on the elements of nature to serve the greatest, the greater good. When the power to co-create is used with integrity, great beauty and benefit flow to all. When power is used for personal gain only, everyone suffers. When the earth is parched, the rainmaker calls the water from the heavens and all that is dormant in the fields and in the people's hearts spring to life again. All right, and the invitation says, the rainmaker is calling you to create something new from the elements that are already in your life. Be sure to work with what it is and not with what might be or could have been. The seeds that have been si silent, um, silently germinating in your heart will burst forth ready for your sunlight. Do not hold back. Put all of your chips, the next roll of the divine dice. Put all of your chips on the next roll of the divine divi dice. That is a real tongue twister, okay? <laughs> so definitely, um, if you're thinking about doing something and you're not sure if you're going to hold back or what you want to do, um, it, if you're asking a question right now, what should you do? It pretty much says, go ahead and throw it all on the table, okay? But, um, you know, I, as a Virgo, I have to say, um, maybe save a little bit for yourself. Make sure you got enough to get by. <laughs> All right. Don't put everything down on the table. So let's take a quick look. Um, so what I want to talk about this week is I, I've made a couple new cards in my narcissist deck. And chances of accidentally pulling one of these cards is going to be kind of low. So I'm just going to go ahead and tell you about them real quick. And instead of in, inculcating it into the reading... Um, so, um, basically we've got, you know, I think that I, I think I lost the darn card. Oh, well, let me tell you about it real quick. So Dr. Gottman is, um, a love relationship therapist, um, and a best-selling book author. And he has some really great advice about narcissistic relationships, okay? So I feel like um, if you feel like your relationship is a one-sided, then um, this might help you to get past this little bump in the road, okay? Um, so the four horsemen of the apocalypse of relationships. If you have any one of these four horsemen, then your relationship is definitely doomed. They said 90% of relationships that have these four qualities are almost 100% certain 
to be doomed. All right, so the first quality is, um, it is, I lost my card, y'all. I'm just guessing now, okay. <laughs> let me look, let me look, what was it? I just had to go shuffle these. All right, so the first quality was criticism, okay? So um, it's almost like a terrible cycle. So the first thing that you want to avoid is criticism. So criticism is going to start you into a cycle of repetitive hate, okay? And then what criticism, oh look, I, I, I stuck it up here on the wall, y'all. <laughs> okay, short-term success, let me see here. So if you want to get past this, you're going to have to watch out with your criticism. Um, number two, What's going to happen if you wake up in the morning and you start criticizing is the other person is going to be defensive. They are not going to be accepting in what you're trying to tell them. They're going to be defensive. They're going to um, deny whatever it is that you're trying to say. They're probably going to gaslight you and turn it around on you. That's kind of the typical narcissistic pattern. And then what is going to return to you is contempt you know um, so if you're feeling defensive then what's gonna happen is your lover is gonna feel contempted they're they're gonna have contempt towards you towards the relationship and then that is going to in turn cause stonewalling so that can happen on either end it doesn't matter who feels like they're the narcissist um, or who is dealing with what uh, one is going to cause the other is going to cause the other is going to immediately circle back. All right. So um, I just wanted to tell you all that I made these cards. I made the four cards and um, I'm going to add them into my narcissist deck. And I'm thinking that that's going to help a lot. So um, because we only just have narcissistic traits. We don't really have that much about... Um, you know what can we do have like how to prevent it but this is much much better this is like so solid information proven by dr gottman and he's a best best-selling author so therefore his information you know it clearly is getting through to people and helping people um so i just wanted to share that with all of you i usually do narcissistic readings but uh, they do get kind of negative and um, I, I do feel like it's very important to know if you're a narcissist and um, to slow down this wretched cycle of hate. Um, I feel like it's not just in your relationships but also you know your work relationships and the people that you're around, um, your family, your siblings, um, especially if you're in um, in a relationship with someone who's an addict that keeps falling back into the same patterns you know you want to stay positive and you don't want to criticize them and and it will keep you from being in that constant cycle of anger and um, and I feel like that will overcome a lot of these issues so I'm gonna go ahead and pull one narcissist card from the deck just because um, that is still the highest amount of views that I have just overall and let me shuffle it a couple times because I haven't used these in a minute so these are handmade DIY deck and basically on one side I do um, you know like kind of a trait that is a very narcissistic trait and um, on the other side, I do how do you deal with it? And, and most of the how do you deal with it can be taken into account by the narcissist themselves or by the person in which has to deal with the narcissist. So it can help both. It's not just um, one-sided reading. And I think the best thing is you find out that um, not everything is always black or white sometimes there's some gray areas 
All right, so for your uh, what's crossing you, we've got the imposter syndrome, a collection of inadequacies. Despite your success, you still feel like a bad person. Even though you are not doing anything bad, you still feel fake, like you're not being your true self. All right, and this I got off of um, a fellow artist website. Um, you know, I don't know his real name, but his channel name is S Truthless, and he is definitely the the number one go to guy whenever I am feeling writer's block or art any kind of you know maybe you just don't want to go and do your YouTube video or maybe you don't want to finish that painting or that book this dude um, will really help you get past those blocks and I think it's his dead honesty that gets you that gets you going <clears throat> for your recent past under the sacrifice all right the imposter syndrome is right underneath that smoky mirror card and um, that had to do with just the fog is going to lift all right and then the sacrifice is what you've been giving up now for some reason your narcissist card next to the sacrifice is revenge so you definitely don't want to be seeking out revenge I know sometimes people deserve it but you my friend don't deserve the karma that's gonna come back to you with that okay don't do it Revenge is self-serving, narcissistic, okay? No matter how bad. Now, let's take a card for the present. So underneath the holy mountain, which basically is saying that, um, you know, there, there's so much godliness coming from the mountains, we have the only one who thinks that is you. Okay, so this is kind of a gaslighting um, card. This has to do with something someone might say if they're gaslighting you. Okay, and then the Rainmaker, we've got this. This is your last card, your future. This is your future card. All right, and with that one, we've got boundaries. All right, so you might need to set some boundaries. And, um, let me see. Okay, it says, remember that the world is only mirroring back to you the condition of your love and your intent so change these within before you take any actions do not take life personally all right and this is so true you can't uh, take every little thing super personally you have to let that stuff go that's right okay so if if you have any questions or comments or if you uh, enjoy this reading please leave a comment all right, so I'm gonna pull a couple little things out of my uh, trinkets. So, so this is a uh, hypnotic poison perfume that my Aunt Ella gave me. And mm, it smells so good. So this is a trinket. I keep it because it reminds me of my Aunt Ella who's passed on. And then for the Holy Mountain, which is your present, we've got the sorry game piece. So maybe somebody needs to say they're sorry. And then for your Rainmaker card, we have a homemade clay bead that I made in high school, but it didn't quite, it's just got a little bit bunk. <laughs> you can see through it, but you can't get a piece of something through. It's just got a little bit of a, like a rough spot in there. It's really hard to get anything through it, but basically it's just saying, don't try, don't give up. You know, this is just your first bead. You can make more, don't worry. Just because your first project fell through or you had trouble or it didn't come out the way you wanted it, doesn't mean that you can't just start over, okay? All right, so there you go. I hope this reading really helped. Um, please, like I said, comment and let me know how you like the reading. And y'all come back and see me next week.